Hey honeys, welcome to the new Austrian victory mod. It's a pretty simple mod. Well, it's not quite actually that simple because Austria won its brother's war versus Brandenburg, Prussia, and then lots of stuff happened. But to keep it very simple and technically inaccurate, this is a what if Austria won World War One mod. But I think they lost World War One. So. Um, there are four nations with focus trees. France, which starts off led by our favorite favorite Napoleon VI, Austria, which starts off led by our other favorite, Karl I, then Prussia, led by a familiar person with an ideology that's just the Kaiserreich version of the real one, and then Russia, led by Kerensky. And those are the four focus trees so far. More will be added in the future. We'll be playing as Russia today and see what happens. Of course, there's no Germany. They lost their battle with Austria. The Swiss are under a military dictatorship, I guess. The Ottomans also still exist, though quite limited in territory. Like, it might look like Egypt's under their control, but this is British red, not Ottoman red. Oh, and look who it is in charge of America. What an interesting turn of events. Huey, I, I don't know what we're gonna do. Instead of the Dutch East Indies, America owns half of it, and the British own the other half, with Australia owning a little more. And it's not just Australia, it's Australasia. Asia looks kind of normal, kind of. And we are in an alliance with Italy, who Italy is also not in the best situation. I have no clue what's gonna happen here. I don't know if it's gonna be difficult or potentially the Austrian Empire might collapse by themselves. They have a collapsing empire national spirit, so it's not too unfathomable that they could fall apart without us even doing a single thing. And we start off not not too weak. We're not a major, but we're not that bad off. And Italy is invading Libya, not too surprising. They won't let us join the war, though I wouldn't really want to. It would maybe be nice to get some extra experience, but it doesn't matter too much. What'll be interesting to see is how we unite Germany. If, if we can unite Germany, I assume we can. It's going to be a difficult path to reunification or not reunification, to initial unification, because Austria controls all the south, and France controls Westphalia, and then Hanover is pretty strong here and is guaranteed by the UK. So if we were to justify right now, we would have to fight Austria, France, and Britain, and Austria, France, and Britain lead big factions. So this is not going to be easy. At least we have Italy, but <laughs> That's a pretty sad thing to have to depend on. And Emperor Napoleon has signed a decree giving himself more power. Not very surprising. We're also doing some decisions here to manage influence. It doesn't matter too much. And I am not going to do focuses right now because I'm going to save all my political power for doing these decisions so then we can do our political focus faster. So now we can do the ensure army loyalty focus. It'll remove a bad national spirit here. And being honest too, I have no clue how to do the German Empire path. We'll see what happens. I'm playing this completely blind, so anything is possible. We might end up doing one of the other random paths. Oh, and a Brazilian civil war has been going on for three years. I don't see Vargas anywhere. I'm sure he's somewhere doing something important, but Brazil will probably be a fun country to play as once they get a focus tree. Same with Huey, <laughs> the good old days. Okay, yeah, this is the right path. We're now led by Mackinson. He unfortunately doesn't have his really cool hat, but he is the guy that wears the really cool hat. There's specifically a dragon in Falling Star that has the very cool hat because it is just that much very cool. Okay, now we can reverse what we did and have the other party come back into power, which we won't do, but it's very funny 
that you can do this and coup the government and then give back control to the other party. It's kind of good, you know, have an oops, I made a mistake button. Now we have to do more decisions this time to crush communist rebels. It's quite the problem with factions fighting against each other and rebels everywhere. You'd think in such a small country that it wouldn't be this big of a problem. We also have to move divisions into the states to crush the rebels. So we'll send this division into the state and we can do this decision. It's kind of like whack-a-mole, moving our divisions around so that we can hit that button. Okay, more whack-a-mole. Looks like we have to move some divisions over here to do that last decision. Such a weird mechanic. Hmm, it doesn't look like Austria is doing very good. Hungary is just a puppet, but this is, uh, this is the sign of things to come. Still, this moving divisions around thing is a bizarre minigame. We're also going to rush and get this focus completed to get a bonus to light aircraft so we can get fighter twos fast. We only have three research slots right now, which isn't good, but I still want to rush fighter twos and cast two if we can get it. Cast is still very, very powerful in Hearts of Iron 4. It's the best thing you can get besides maybe railway guns. Okay, and now we're at 100%. It's very cute. We can finally end this victory at last, we lose a terrible national spirit, and we can start doing our political branch. Oh, look at that sexy hat. I'm happy to see him wearing it as he poses for the focus icon. Unfortunately, to continue with this, we have to form Germany. I think this focus tree helps us do that. I still don't want to spoil myself as to what everything does, so we'll see what happens when we get there, and I'll build an army to prepare for that. Anti-air is also very very good. You want that in all your divisions, even if you plan on having air supremacy. And we just barely have enough manpower to do this focus here, and we can remilitarize these lands. We're a little low on equipment, though. I had to deploy those guys a little early. How there's a five-way Serbian civil war? Well, <laughs> that's quite ambitious. We'll finally get that research buff to light aircraft, and then we still need to deploy some more divisions before we can invade Saxony and hold a referendum or something elsewhere. And America is doing a very cute campaign against global radicalism. Belgium has joined France, which puts us in an even worse situation. And now there's a Franco-British non-aggression treaty, which is also concerning. So we're going into Saxony. They seem kind of weak. Yeah. I also noticed we have more of fielded manpower than France, Belgium, and Luxembourg, and French Germany combined, so it might be a good idea to go over in that direction. I think Austria is probably pretty weak too, now that they're all divided, but I don't have enough intel on them. This guy who leads Hanover just looks like American Oswald Mosley. And the UK approves it, which is delightful. Hopefully we'll be able to make friends with the UK. I think the real Oswald Mosley needs to take over the UK. Oh, I am in my statement. He has. We just have to go to war with France, which we probably probably will very soon. So this is all coming along rather nicely. There is a withdrawal schedule though, so I don't know what's going on. I don't know if this means that potentially Britain might not withdraw. I, I hope they withdraw. They did agree to it. And Mosley's in power and he seems to be our friend. Oh, and what a surprising turn of events. The Netherlands also joins France, which in the end, it just gives us a larger border to mount our attack from. So that we can finally get to Versailles, the only place where a German empire can be declared, allegedly. And we've completed the Bismarck's plan focus, so now we can declare the North German Confederation. We'll get some cores, and now we're in a good position to attack and destabilize France. So um, I, I checked this, and it looks like we can't really attack France through a focus tree until we already go after Austria. And Austria might just get 
give us Silesia, so we might not really have to attack them. Also, there was no Italian invasion into Ethiopia, which was really weird. It might happen someday, but not today. There's an independent Suez Canal Authority, but it looks like it's run by some British guy, so we all know who is really leading it. But it's an interesting mechanic, so everyone will have access through the Suez during the war. Britain also still, of course, owns Gibraltar. An Indian United Front has formed, which is something I mentioned during my Red Flood video when it didn't exist during a playthrough. And France does still control Indochina, it's just all puppets. And Brazil is still fighting, so this is like a five-year war now or something. So Romania wants to leave Russia's faction and join our faction. I'm very tempted to do the very, um, how do you say it? Sexy and independent option of telling them to their face that we are better off without them, but I can't quite do that, so they will join us. And they're 23 divisions and their long border with Austria. We have so much manpower on volunteer only. We're gonna have a million manpower in the field soon on volunteer only with 600,000 left to spare. Very uh, sexy and brave and independent. I guess I should start training my army since we have so much extra equipment. We also finally got another research slot so I can start researching some tank stuff. You know, these leaders also interesting. It's like a real guy or is it just like a made up guy? But anyways, that's the end of the video for today. There will be a part two of this though, so don't worry. Anyways, I'll see you all next time in that second video.